Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is your friendly neighbor Dr. Jimmy One Two Eight bring to you another video. This time it's going to be a systems edition. I believe it's gonna be my third systems edition video. I'm very very excited for this. This my friends is a build that I put together for a good friend of mine, a long time friend uh, since I was in grade school. Um, and this rig is basically put together for two main purposes. One of course for gaming and the second for uh, rendering, animation, 3D, etc. etc. So it's only fitting that we go through the specs and look at the analogy. Let us look at our processor. Today we're going to be using the i7 4770K, the, uh, the unlocked version of uh, the i7. Of course, um, and we're going to be overclocking this build. Um, its base clock, I believe, is 3.4. So we're going to be overclocking all the way to 4.0. And to be cooling that, uh, we have the Cooler Master Gemini 2 S5. Far, which should do just fine. I did my research uh, and it's a pretty good air cooler um, and of course it has support for all the chipsets so we don't have anything to worry about there. So let's move on to the motherboard. And now for our motherboard we decided to get the MSI Z87M G43 uh, micro ATX motherboard. Uh, we decided to get this because um, we're not really looking for a full-size motherboard and our case was, is also not a full-size case. We just wanted you know basic support for overclocking as the Z87 does support that and of course support for the RAM that we have. Of course your it could, does come with your standard USB 3, uh, SATA 6 gigabyte ports, um, PCI Express Generation 3, and yeah, it's an overall good board. It uses the uh, military class four products. It has uh, solid capacitors, which are guaranteed to last for at least ten years. So this is going to be a motherboard that's going to be used for quite a long time. For the video card, we went with the Palit uh, GeForce GTX 760 from Palit. Duh! It's, of course, it use it. Uh, it features the Jetstream. Uh, cooling unit which is a really really nice uh, aftermarket cooler uh, this has I believe two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory if I'm not mistaken or three I'm just going to post uh, the specs of the card somewhere on the screen and it uh, one of the reasons why we chose this over the 660Ti is mainly because of the uh, 256 bit uh, frame buffer that the card comes with so which will definitely benefit um, any you know um, ed video editing rendering and etc overall it's, a lot, it's also an awesome card for gaming and now let's actually look at the storage options so for storage we wanted the best of both worlds and uh, we went with a solid state drive for our operating system and uh, major you know programs that will be used and for storage you got a one uh, of course okay the SSD is a crucial M500 uh, 2.5 solid straight drive it has a capacity of 120 gigabytes this is the second time that i have actually used this in one of the builds and it's a very very decent um uh solid state drive for its price it does its thing and of course uh for mass storage we have a one terabyte western digital caviar blue say the three with the 64 mb cache why did i select the blue um because I like blues <laughs> and that's pretty much it so let's see uh, where all of this all of these things will be housed and for the case we decided to get something really simple uh, we initially wanted the cooler master n200 but it was uh, unfortunately out of stock so we decided now to get the cooler master n300 which is its somewhat older brother it's nice it's simple it has a nice mesh front and it will house everything that we need for the micro ATX case I mean for the micro ATX 
system so it's this is uh, more than sufficient it has a lot of room for lots of fans nice and efficient cooling what more could you ask it's a really awesome value case only from cooler master now for the ram we went ahead and got the g scale trident x 16 gigabyte 8 gb by 2 uh, 2400 megahertz kit so it's an awesome awesome ram 16 gigs is just perfect for video editing so that we can render at very high you know resolutions and all and then of course faster ram will always be really nice it'll always be a good help i mean the difference between 2400 megahertz and 1866 is rather significant and we usually see that difference in you know uh, data processing not really in gaming so of course since this is going to be an editing rig these rams will do perfectly fine and plus it's really nice Ooh. and of course let us not forget the power supply there's only one brand that i trust with my life in, in cebu and that brand my friends is silverstone straight from our friends uh, from fine upgrades uh, the Silverstone Essential Series is the 500 watt uh, version it is non-modular but it's totally fine you know it's great for the value it's 80 plus certified so we're guaranteed to have a very very trustworthy power supply again I can't stress enough how you can never ever cheap out on a power supply unless you want to risk the rest of your system 80 plus Silverstone 500 watts all we need all the power baby so i think we're ready um to actually put this thing together so let's get to it all right so let's begin the installation process so here is uh, the motherboard of course i am now with the anti-static strap so hopefully no one will call me out for not doing so let's take the board out it's of course in plastic this is not anti-static which is okay so what's nice here if you don't have uh, you know an anti-static workstation or, or you know uh, a mat anti-static mat you could always use the motherboard box as a test bench where you can set the motherboard on so there you go there is our motherboard and uh, here of course is our processor so I'm going to be showing you step by step how to put the PC together take think of this as another um, how to guide for building PCs since this is my third ever C uh, systems edition build so simply take the tape off pull that open and now you see processor here's the box always keep the box and then here is our i7 e sticker oh yeah so you like to put that and show off you know put that on your case hey man i got an i7 yeah let's take out the processor Oof. it's inside can i have this So here is the processor so what you want to do is slowly remove it and take it out now what you want to do is look for the golden arrow at this point here and you want it to match the arrow here so there's an arrow there I can't show it to you but anyway to remove uh, the bracket simply push down and pull away this will release the retention bracket and here is where you want to have the arrow the golden arrow positioned and you have to be extremely careful you are not to apply any force just let the processor sit into place Do not apply any pressure make sure it's nice and snug okay that's good you don't want to bend the pins of the motherboard because if you bend the pins of your motherboard then you have a motherboard that is absolutely useless so now to to secure the processor simply uh, reposition the bracket over push down a little bit 
end with this protected plastic automatically or mechanically removes itself now if you are ever planning to upgrade your motherboard and you plan to sell it make sure you keep this because you want this to cover the pins of the motherboard or else the pins will break in transition or in transit so that is pretty much it now i'd like to ask my assistant to give me the ram that's somewhere over there somewhere over there yes thank you very much so here's our ram the next easier thing to install really is the ram so uh, let's remove the ram from the box g scale again is the ram brand that i am not afraid to recommend the most stable the most trusted rams available in the country so g skill you are amazing so here's another g skill sticker or another sticker that's g skill let's take out the ram slots and of course uh, big shout outs to new tech pacific mall where we purchase uh, all our items this is these are their warranty stickers so i'm just going to leave them there and just simply take the wrap out pull it out of the plastic there, there's one put it down and there's two set down Now to install RAM, all you really have to do is follow the grooves of the DIMM slots, of the RAM slots. You have one short groove and one long groove, so you just match them up. And when you're installing RAM, make sure to install the RAM in the color-coded uh, slot, so, if you, so that you'll be able to use the RAM in dual channel, which is of course more efficient. So black on black, blue on blue. Ooh, so position the over then you'll need to apply a bit of force push press down and then the dim slot will lock or the latches will lock into place do the same the other ram push down one side second side and automatically there you go now next uh, we ideally want to install the cooler before we put the motherboard in the case so let me ask my assistant to bring me the cooler and magically the cooler appears Ooh. so here's what we're going to do we're going to set this aside and what i'm going to do is unbox the cooler for you so this is an aftermarket cooler this is from cooler master again this is gemini s uh, gemini 2 s 524. Now, this is the first time I've ever dealt with this power supply. Oh, this power supply. <laughs> with this cooler. And it's actually a low profile cooler. And I did my research uh, about its performance, and it does pretty decent. It, it, it performs uh, just on par, I believe, with the H60 liquid cooling, I think. Or it's just slightly hotter, but yeah because uh, we will need extra cooling because we're going to be overclocking so I actually like the packaging uh, inside we find nice soft foam and the mounting brackets right away easy business okay so nice soft foam to protect um, the, pro the, the, the heat sink and the heat pipe so there you are so first thing you'd like to do is always check the user guide and look for the brackets that you need. So for Intel, it's always the X-shaped bracket and for AMD, it's always the rectangular shaped bracket. So let me show you those. So here is the AMD rectangular shaped bracket. Yes, this is for AMD processors, and here is our Intel bracket. Okay, and here, so I know I'm going to need this. And then, looking at the screws, I believe I will need most of them. It does come with thermal compound, and here are the retention bracket. Uh, 
mechanism. And then let's take a look at the cooler. Actually, it comes pre-installed with the fan. So it's really, it's a really nice, simple, low-profile cooler. Here's your cold plate, the heat pipes. There are five heat pipes, and they're pretty thick. So the heat pipes carry the heat that's produced from the processor. Sorry, you didn't see that. There you go. There's a cold plate. There are the heat pipes, right? So they carry the heat away into the heat pin array. Heat spreads out, and the fan blows the heat. Really nice. Okay. So now, let us figure out how to. Okay, do very this. interesting. So the first thing you're supposed to do is screw these things in, and then what you want to do is make sure that when you orient uh, the cooler, okay. So you test it first, put it on. Did you see that? Mm, okay, so the RAM is fine. Uh, I believe this should fit into the case, no problem. I think there's enough headroom at the top. And then um, I just noticed here that uh, the connector is like down here. You want to connect it? Yeah, I guess it's fine. I don't have to reorient the fan. I can just run it underneath the glove. So basically, what you do is um, once you have that thing. On around there, okay. What you do is you're supposed to get up there, and then from behind, well, there you attach the back plate. Now, how do you, how do you apply thermal paste? Well, it is um, really. It, for me, it, it totally depends on the type of cooler that you're installing. So, if you're installing a massive. Um, massive air cooler or an air cooler like the one that we're doing I recommend somewhere there um, the using a key size amount in the middle of the processor because the weight of the heat sink should be Stay. 